I'm Beth Wilson. I'm one of the hosts of STEM in 30. And today I'm joined by Mark Okrand, and you invented the Klingon language. Right, I invented that for Star Trek III, yeah. In the original program, they never spoke the Klingon language. They referred to it, but they never spoke it. And the first time we hear the language is in Star Trek The Motion Picture. And I didn't do that either. Okay. Uh, actually, that's a, maybe half a dozen lines of Klingon in that that were created by James Doohan, who's the actor who played Scotty oh, all really? those years. And I came to it with Star Trek III. Uh, and I started with the few lines that Jimmy Doohan had created and expanded from there because there was a lot more dialogue in Star Trek III than there had been in anything in the past. How do you create a language? First thing is to think about why you're creating it. Who's it for? Who are the speakers? Uh, who are they going to be talking to? What are they going to be talking about? Where do they live? And then start with the sounds. What do you think it's going to sound like? And the main thing is to keep track. Make some decisions and keep track. And in, this, in the case of Klingon, uh, since it was a language from people who are not human, they're from somewhere else, they're from outer space, I wanted the language to sound not human uh, and behave in a non-human way. So some of that is a little linguistic trickery because you have to know how languages work to make it not work that way. And some of it is just playing, playing with the mouth. The other, the other constraint I had was that it was going to be spoken by real human actors. So I couldn't make up noises for them to say that you can't do with a regular human mouth and tongue and throat and all that. Now, uh, you worked on uh, the Star Trek motion pictures for a couple of years. What's one of your favorite memories of, of working with it? I think my favorite memory of working on the, on the pictures was the, the first one I worked on, which is Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. It's a teeny bit of Vulcan. It's only four lines. I don't think the scene lasts even 10 seconds long. Uh, and I had to teach the lines to the two actors who were speaking them. One was a character named Savik, a Vulcan woman named Savik, who was played by Kirstie Alley. Uh, and then I had to do the same with Mr. Spock, Blender Nimoy, and work with him a bit. Finished, left the sound stage, realizing that I had just taught Mr. Spock how to speak Vulcan. And, you know, <laughs> what a bizarre idea that was. Now, before you started on Star Trek, you were a fellow here at the Smithsonian, and you studied languages. Right. Why is it important that we study language at all? It's important to study language at all because that's what makes us human. I think. I think it, it, it's a great gives us great insight into the way we think the way we deal with each other um, where we come from and hopefully where we're going and it's just it opens up the whole world and by studying different languages uh, you learn different ways of looking at things there's not only one way to do things uh, one, one of the greatest excitements for someone who, who deals with a couple of different languages is translating from mm -hmm. one to the other because it's not word 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 you have to think about okay what is the original person trying to say using that language, and how, are, how am I going to change that into this other language, given the cultural differences between uh -huh. the two and so on. Just thinking about all that is fascinating and insightful and helpful. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. really appreciate it. Good, thanks.